in the name of God, I say Happy New Year to all of us again. And we pray that this will be a wonderful year and a more fruitful one for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. We will continue to have reasons to rejoice in Him and then to be a fulfilling one for all of us in the name of Jesus. We are still basking in the euphoria of uh, Christmas. I hope you have not forgotten. Um, so this is the first Sunday after Christmas. And uh, we know that we live to celebrate many more on the land of the living in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And whatever you do, do everything to the glory of God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Christ, our Lord, is born for us. Come, let us adore him. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. I God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be a hard advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Dear people of God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people. Make me, name him. As we kneel, can we say the word of confession together? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have not sufficiently worked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives us, who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please let us take a collect together on page 2 of the bulletin. And we'll also have it on the screen. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take a nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Vissit vaak. The epistle is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 12. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and led them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits and all of them were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Chapter 16, beginning at the 17th verse. Glory to Christ. And these signs shall follow those who believe. 
In my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And they will drink deadly poisons. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on those who are sick and they will recover. After the Lord Jesus Christ has spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord walked with them and confirmed his word by signs that followed them. This is the gospel of Christ. Please let us sit back and let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the first day, the first Sunday in the year 2023. It is indeed of your mercies that we are not consumed. We ask God as we begin this year, may we begin with you in the name of Jesus. As, you, as we begin this year, Lord, you will go ahead of us. Every form of impossibility will be pulled down before us. You are the God of all possibilities. You will do greater things in our lives. And the mega miracles you have promised us, it will be realities. And your name will be glorified. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Please sit back. Again, we want to appreciate God for bringing us to the beginning of a new year. And it is so apt to thank God for all of us that have come this morning again. I want to appreciate us for making it to this place. I know that there will have been temptations of, I will join online, I will join online. And uh, as much as possible, if it's possible to, to appeal, um, you know, this year, as we begin to run with God, and that we avoid this temptation of joining online. And you know, if it's possible, that we make it. And however, we understand that uh, living here, you know, after 12, just this morning, and coming back again this morning, might have looked impossible to a number of people. But in the course of this year, we are also praying that may we never have any reason to run Hector Scatter in the name of Jesus. You know, people run several miles within a few minutes. And people will ask questions, how come? It is because of that challenge. May that never be your portion. I say may that never be our portion in the name of Jesus. And I uh, want to appreciate God for everything that he did for us in the last year. Year 2022. For the success we recorded and for the grace that he bestowed upon each and every one of us. For our homes, we have reasons to continue to thank the Lord. And it's a new year, new year filled with hope. New year filled with greater things. And it's uh, possible that we have people who have always been giving um, several, you know, prophecies about the new year. Every year, every day, as is so merits and demerits. But it's important for all of us to hold on to the merits and to hold on to the possibilities in those days and years. And so the year 2023 has come, loaded with many blessings. 
And I ask that these blessings will be our portion in the name of Jesus. This year has been declared as our year of mega miracles. And we're praying just this early this morning. Um, I said that it's a name. When you give a name to something, you expect that thing to answer according to that name. And interestingly, we didn't give names to ourselves. There is nobody on the surface of the earth. The day you were born, maybe you carried your own name from heaven. It was only Jesus, and he didn't give himself that name. But before he was born, there were several prophecies. This is the name you must give to him. And thank God for John the Baptist as well. But not that at their own naming ceremonies, they now said, my name, my name. I am sure whoever is holding that child at that time might want to drop that child, you know, unknowingly and run away because you are not expected to have that baby talk. But we had the name and one way or the other, we continue to answer that name up to now. Whether we were there or not, whether we were conscious of that name or not. But now we answer. And so we also expect that the year 2023, we answer for us by that name of mega miracles in the name of Jesus. When we talk about these mega miracles, the meaning of miracle is starts to do an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. It's attributed to divine. So it's not something that you know. It's not... It's, actually not something that you want to lay claim of any glory to it. You, want, you don't have any glory. You don't have any right to say that you did it. You have no understanding one way or the other. But all you can do is to say that this is the lost doing. And then you confirm that this is marvelous in your eyes. So the many of miracles, and you now begin to wonder, when the scripture now says that, you know, that with man, this looks impossible. But with God, all things are possible. As a matter of fact, in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, the Bible says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? God is saying in Jeremiah, in fact, at a, as, as a matter of fact, in this aspect of Jeremiah, God was telling the children of Israel, that, look, you are enjoying. Don't think I cannot turn it around. The other one, you are not enjoying. Don't think I cannot make you to enjoy. I am the God of all flesh. And the scripture says, is anything too hard for me? Now, I take the text from Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1. Luke chapter 5. You know, there is an account there that we quickly look at. Just um, do a bit of exegesis and we learn whatever God wants us to learn. Luke chapter 5, he said from verse 1, So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fisherman had gone from them and were washing their net. Now, verse 3, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. Verse 4 says, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Verse 5. Can we read it together, church? Verse 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. 6. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking, seven. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled boats. And the boat began to do what? To sink. Hallelujah. Somebody said, impossibility is nothing for those who believe in possibilities. Impossibility is nothing for those who believe in possibility. Interestingly, the word they will tell you that the word impossibility itself means I'm possible. The word impossibility himself. They give you a pen. They give you a paper. 
you are saying, please, write impossibility. You have the pen and the paper. And you can redesign, you can reconstruct, you can rewrite that word in such a way that it will give you am possible. It's just to put an apostrophe somewhere. And then you put it be between the first high and him. And the word itself becomes, I am possible. I also I always remember this story. Robert Schuller asking somebody to design an old glass house for him. And the architect said, no, it is not possible. And this man gave him his dictionary. And he said, look for the word impossibility in my dictionary. And that man collected the dictionary and started opening. I started opening. I said, man, I cannot find it in your dictionary. He said, yes, the word impossibility is not in my dictionary. Now, we have started a new year. It's important for us to believe in the God of possibility. There are different dimensions to life. Sometimes you don't believe it happens. But sometimes God wants you to believe before it happens. It is not every time that, you know, it's not everything that you have enjoyed that you prayed for. People of God, it is not everything that we have enjoyed that you knew that you intentionally prayed for it. Somehow, some of these things came and we may be carried away in a way that we tend not to appreciate God specifically. I was saying it here just yesterday when I was preaching. I said, you must be intentional about mentioning the benefits of God one after the other. So that to prove to God that you are not taking any of these benefits for granted. Peter and his friends, they are toiled all night. You know what to toil? You know what it means? Toiling, laboring, struggling all night. According to this text, he was a professional. He was you know, a professional. He knew what it means to, to get it right. He had been doing this for a, very, no, I mean, for, for a number of years. God called him out of that. So he was still there. So he knew what it means to be there. And so the Bible says they had labored all night. They caught nothing. And God got to that point. God didn't ask him what his problems were. He didn't ask him what had gone wrong for him. No, he just said, I need to use your boat. Let me say it. For us to engage and to experience mega miracles in the year 2023 you must intentionally seek to hear from god god will be calling for your attention this year he wants your attention that was the first thing he did with peter the instrument of his office god decided to use it and the bible says he then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Oh, you want to think that was a mistake? No. Jesus knew all things. So it, it was intentional. Why was it Simon's boat? Somebody who had toiled all night and he didn't get anything. Why not another man's boat? There was an account in, I mean, there's an account in John chapter 4. You remember the woman of Sika, Samaritan woman. She had an encounter, I mean, had an encounter with Jesus. That woman had an encounter with Jesus. And lo and behold, they started, you know, bit by bit, and it resulted into the woman becoming an evangelist, lady evangelist for that matter. She went into the town and said, come and see the man that has been telling me everything that has happened to me. It was intentional. So God will be calling your attention. You remember how God called the attention of Moses. The Bible says he saw that a, I mean, a bush was what? Was burning and was not consumed. And the man, because of who he was, he wanted to find out. Some of us, we don't take yes or no for an answer. If they tell us this has happened, he said, mm -mm, I want to find out. Maybe that is the method God will use to draw you closer to himself this year. God will be calling for your attention to experience the mega miracles he wants. So God wanted to use his boat. And he said, put out a little from the land. And he sat down. The Bible says he taught multitude. Now, maybe in the year 2022, maybe that year was so dark. Maybe you, you lost several, I mean, several things or hope was even lost in the year 2022. God has not been silenced. And even if you think he has been silenced over your case, 
God has not abandoned you. This God has been there. He knows all things. He's, you know what the scripture says? The Bible says, he who keeps us, never what? Sleep, nor what? Nor slumber. <laughs> so, if he doesn't sleep or slumber, that means when you were sleeping, he's what? He's awake. Watching. So, if he has kept you safe, if it's about that other matter, he's not sleeping. If when you were sleeping, he's not sleeping. So, if he has not answered you over that matter, he's not, he's not sleeping. God is working something out on your behalf. You know, if it were to be any of us, it's possible when Jesus said he wanted to use the boat, it's possible you were aggressive at that time and were like hungry. And so, you don't know what has happened though. So, please don't, you can't use my boat. In fact, we are even ready to go home now. He says, please, please, go away. We are, we are. And you know, and the man will have been justified because how could somebody have labored all night, a professional, what was he going to tell other, other people that were learning from him? What was he going to tell his wife? Maybe the, the wife had even been expecting money or so things to come up. And he had nothing to say. But Jesus wanted his attention. As he wanted the attention of Moses. He said, Moses, now remove your sandals. For this ground is what? It's a holy ground. This is a way to get our attention. And I've also mentioned it here that even when we want to preach to people, there are ways to also get people's attention. You don't start from the things that we get such an individual infuriated and say, no, 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 I don't want to listen to it. No. But there are ways of opening up the life of that person until the person will release himself into your hands. Into your hands. And the next thing you see is this, whatever you say at that time, the person will do it by the wisdom of the Lord. So it's important. And one other thing to also understand is this. As we go on to experience, to trust God for mega miracles, there may be challenges. Problems in lifetime sometimes are ways that God brings us to himself. But if there are problems, you can also see them as what? Challenges. In the corporate world, we don't talk about problems. We talk about what? Challenges. So don't call it problems. So call it a challenge. And challenges are meant, I mean, they are meant to be surmounted. So when you call it a challenge, it repositions your mentality that this is something that you must resolve. It says there must always be a solution. I've heard it for, for a very long time. They say there is no problem without a solution. And so God wanted this man's attention. And God called him. So problems, you must also understand, they are part of God's plans. If you have labored and you have caught nothing, God is not silent. God is ever awake. There was another boat, but God decided to use the boat of Peter. And then said, will you give God a chance this year if he decides to use your boat? If God decides to use your house, if God decides to use anything that belongs to you, will you give God a chance this year? If we call upon you to come and do something, whatever you are enjoying now is not the best of God, people of God. Whatever you are enjoying now is not the best of God. The best of God in your life is yet to manifest. And it will manifest in the name of Jesus. But one thing is this. You don't use what you have to chase away what you are meant to have. Peter had one boat at that time. He decided to give away the boat so that he could get what he didn't have. No wonder the scripture says, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and what? And dies it will not bear any fruit. Some of us, what we have, probably in our account or in our kitty or anywhere now, we cherish it so much that we don't want to lose it. Remember what the scripture says. He said, he who does not want to lose his life for my sake, will eventually lose it. But he who wants to keep it, he wants to, I mean, you want to save it for your sake, he said, he will lose it. So you cannot keep certain things to yourself. The Bible says everything we have comes from whom? From God. And it's my prayers that the wisdom to manage situations this year, it will release unto us in the name of Jesus.
All things are possible. And this is one mentality that we must also go with in the course of this year. All things are possible. Somebody said to reach the impossible, you must first practice with the most difficult possibilities. To reach the impossible. Oh, indeed, it is, you know, it's possible. Everybody believes it's possible. But you need to act. You need to take some steps. That was what Peter did. And so God gave him an instruction. And let me also say this. To enjoy these mega miracles, another point is this. This year, God will tell you to do certain things that will look stupid. Maybe I should tell you. If you were to be that widow of Sarivat, she had the last you know, portion of meal to eat. And the man of God said, give me, just prepare it for me. And the woman, I know this age and time, you know, I mean, in Nigeria, 911 is not, uh, you know, it's not common. And you don't even have a uh, emergency line. You will have taken that man for an arm robber. Daylight arm robber. I mean, in this, uh, uh, are, you, are you deaf? Even if you are deaf, I'm telling you, this is the last portion for myself and my son. And the man kept on saying, no, give it to me. First do mine. It is possible you tell the person. In fact, if it were to be our age, you would have told the person that you have nothing. You won't tell the person this is the last one. Because you understand the possibility of acting like Elijah to ask you to bring it. So instead of saying this is the last portion, no. Because even if you are not giving him, you don't know if he has a charm that the thing can disappear from your hand. So do you have anything? Nothing. And as soon as the man leaves, he just gets into the room and do what? And eat the last portion. Then the Bible says that woman even said something. He said, this was the last portion. And after eating that last portion, what were they expecting? Death. You couldn't imagine. Please, this year, don't attempt to keep what you cannot keep. Everything has been given to you by God. Nothing should be too much for you to give to God this year. Nothing. And the first thing you are giving to him is what? Your life. If you are here, you have not given your life, give him your life. Nothing should be too much for you to give. He said, ah, this one, I cherish it so much. Ah, this car, I cherish it so much. You know, a day, whether you leave that car or not, that car will leave you one day. <laughs> oh, this building, I cherish it so much. This, um, so, there is nothing that you are, Some of these things that, in fact, all of the things that God has given us, God is testing us towards it. You know one other thing God keeps telling me is about Luke chapter 12. The scripture says that when you read, there's another version of that, Luke chapter 12. And God keeps talking about it. That if you are unfaithful in the business of others, who will give you the business of your own? Many of us, we are caretakers of what the Lord has given to us now. It is not yet our own. God is waiting to see how you will manage what he has given you so that he can now release the mega miracles into your life. How many of us are expecting these mega miracles this year? The Lord will release it into your hands in the name of Jesus. But don't forget these points. They are vital. Don't attempt to keep what you cannot actually keep. The Bible says, all things come from God and they belong to him. Very soon now we're going to read it. And that is why our liturgy as a church is very wonderful. You know, that's why you can't see any, any so-called evangelical priest and we push aside our liturgy. That is a cake. No, the liturgy is spirit-filled. It is only the person that is in charge of the liturgy that might not have the Holy Spirit. We are going to read that prayer on your factory. Eh? He said, all things come from you. And of your own, do we what? Do we give you? It reminds us that practically we own nothing. What you are going to release one day? Are you the owner? You are not. You, one day you will release it. So are you the owner? You are just caretaker. So for you to experience a mega miracle this year, nothing must be too big for you to give to God. And let me also say this. For you to expect a mega miracle this year, please worship the God of all miracles. The God of all possibilities. Worship God in a way that you have not worshipped him before. 
worship, one of the things God, I mean, that I really learned, you know, is that, look, if you worship him, fine. If you don't worship him, it cannot change God. God remains God. So why not worship him? Why not give him thanks? Why not appreciate him? I was thinking again about let us bishop. And the God ministered to me. He said, son, you loved him as your husband bishop. But I loved him as my son. He said, so, get off. He said, you love him as your husband bishop. But me, I loved him as my what? As my son. He said, some of you grieve over him. Not because of what you wanted to do for him. But because of what you think he was meant to do for humanity. Listen. God is God. God, he knows more than we can do. He's our God. He's our maker. Continue to worship him for who he is. There are ways that he said to open unto us. There are ways that he said to open unto us. Remember the woman with the issue of blood and that takes us to another point. Another point. For you to experience mega miracles this year, be expectant. Expect the miracle. Don't leave your life to chance. That ah, if it works and if it doesn't, no. You see, there is another aspect of that. In the context of what we are talking about now, this point, be expectant. Expect the miracle. The woman with the issue of blood. That's Mark chapter nine, verses twenty-four to twenty-five. That woman seems to have the only hope of Jesus. She had not met Jesus before. But she said, it is either today or no other day. And she made up her mind to go after Jesus. She said, I must get it today. And to the glory of God, she got it. Be expectant. However, when it comes to being in the face or in the hands of the enemy, and I'm praying to God, that may you never be faced with a situation that will make you to doubt or to deny your God in the name of Jesus. Remember what these three men said, the three Hebrew, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, the God we serve, we do what? We deliver us. But if he does not deliver us, they were still expectant. But we know that, look, God is God. He can decide to do and undo. If he doesn't do it, nothing will bring him down. However, be expectant. They were still expecting God to save them. But they reminded those people that, look, my commitment to God is not just today. My confidence in God, my trust in God, my faith in God is not a function of now. It's a function of how many years? Many, many years back. I have committed myself to him before now. So even if you will not do this, I have come to understand God better. He can do and what? And undo. So if he has not done this, I will now not say that I'm not going to serve him again. How about those things he has done for me? The man said, 80 years, God has never disappointed me. Ah, so if you have enjoyed this grace till the year 2023, uh-uh then you should be thankful to God. So again, be expectant. Worship the Lord. Let nothing be too much for you to give to God as you trust God for this day. And it's my prayers that God Almighty will help all of us to achieve the seemingly impossible in the mighty name of Jesus. It's also important to let us know that relationships are very important this year. Relationships are very, very important. We must keep that relationship with God in such a way that we'll be able to make the most use of our relationships and even our decisions. We have decisions to make. We have relationships that we also know. Now, many of us sometimes, we seem to be unfair to God. But keep your relationship intact. I have yes, your strength is in your connection. I'm talking about relationship. Everything working is connected. Connection is the mother of collection. Read connection are first sacrificial before they become beneficial. To some of us, we don't want commitment. We don't want the real connection. Every connection is first what? Sacrificial before it is what? Beneficial. You want to connect two things together. 
you are likely to take part of the two. So the process of taking part of the two, they can argue. You say, mm, don't take out of the ah, you don't know what I want to use it for. You say, no, 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 don't take it. Then it remains like that. Real connections are first sacrificial before they become beneficial. Relationships are highly sacrificial. Then they become highly beneficial. And just a quick one too. As we make decisions, it's the beginning of the year. We also make decisions. Now, when you lay too much emphasis on decision making and less on decision managing, listen to this, you have the tendency to lack focus, discipline, intentionality, and purpose. Two things I've mentioned here. Decision making and decision managing. When we make decisions, we make decisions maybe for a lifetime, but we, ma- we must manage decisions on a daily basis. This is the year 2023. Last year, I knew some of us prayed like we will never pray before. God, if you can help me this year, I will serve you. You will be afraid of yourself. Mm. God said, mm. Mark it too. She has said it again. Mm. But even those aspects of serving the Lord, how do you manage your decision? I remember those times, you know, when we were learning organic chemistry and some of those structures. There are ways that we have to put it on our head. You get to our rooms and you see us drawing structures on the wall so that as you are waking up every morning, you are seeing that structure. As you are seeing it, it becomes emblazoned on your mind. So if you get to the exam hall and they tell you to draw the structure of so, so, so and so, you just go back to your bedroom and you continue to do what? To picture it. You manage your decision daily even though you don't make your decisions daily. Management of decision this year is very important. Each decisions are made. Each time decisions are made, there is what we call excitement. You are excited. Hey, 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 I've given my life to Jesus. But are you really managing it? Even relationships. Why many homes are breaking today is because they don't want to make sacrifices. No more sacrifices. No more managing of that decision. Don't forget, relationships are first what? Sacrificial. Before they become what? Beneficial. But many of us want to start from the place of what? Benefits. And then we can go back to the place of, you can't rewrite it. It's not possible. You can't rewrite it. Make your decisions early but manage your decisions daily. Please don't forget that. Make your decisions early, but you manage your decisions. How? Daily. Each time decisions are made, there is an excitement, but if they are not well managed daily, you end up not achieving your goals. This is a year of remarkable glory, a year of remarkable blessing. It's the year that God has positioned each of us specifically for certain number of miracles. And it is my prayers that God will help us to be able to celebrate these mega miracles beyond our own imaginations in the mighty name of Jesus. The year is filled with grace, is filled with glory. Please continue to emphasize on the blessing of God. God is able, is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or think. There is this song. I will make room for two. You are thy Jesus. You are all the mothers. You are all the mothers. Now, I don't know what matters to you again in life. But the only thing that should matter, that should matter to you is who? Is God. If God matters to you the most, he will make all things that matters to him to be in your hands without any form of struggle. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Please kneel as we pray.
This is the first day in the year 2023. God is good. He's faithful to us. First Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 says, Ebenezer, eat at all, you have help us. So thank the Lord this morning. Appreciate his holy name. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Glorify him for giving you grace to see another year. The year of our mega miracles. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh, oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul.
miracle God. You are the miracle God. You are what Thank him on behalf of your family members. You have all crossed into the new year. Thank him for 365 days of 2022. That you did not, he did not allow the will and the witches of your enemies to prevail over you. Thank him. Appreciate him. Magnify him. It's a new year. It's a new opportunity. It's a new level of possibilities. So thank him. Thank him. Appreciate him. Forget the things of the past and thank him for this new beginning. Magnify the Lord. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Indeed, Ebenezer had been a helper. Thank him. Can you pray and say, Father, this year, again and again, show yourself as my helper in every situation. This year, 2023, again and again, show yourself as my helper in every situation. This year, again and again, in my family, in my business, in all I do, show yourself as my helper. Father, send the right people to me in this year, 2022. Send the right people to me. Send the right help to me. Open new doors and burn the bridges of impossibilities in my life this year. Open new doors, mega miracles, mega doors for me. Can you pray and say, Father, I receive divine insight for mega miracles this year. I receive divine insight for mega miracles this year. I receive divine ideas for mega miracle this year. I receive divine inspiration, revelations for mega miracle this year. Oh, every step of the way in my business, every step of the way, according to your word this morning, I receive divine insight for mega miracles this year. Oh, this year I will not bow my head in shame. I will not be a victim of circumstances. We will not mourn in my family. Lord Jesus Christ, but this year, we receive insight for mega miracles. We receive divine ideas, divine revelations. Every step of the way, we receive divine revelations. Lord, daily, in the 365 days of this year, I will receive heavenly help. I look up to the east for where does my help come from? My help come from you, O oh Lord. So, Father, this year, I receive help daily. I receive help daily. I receive help daily. I receive help daily. In my business, I receive help daily. My children will receive help daily. My husband will receive help daily. My wife will receive help daily. In the name of Jesus Christ. I recover all that I lost last year. Can you pray and say, Father, I recover all I lost in 2022. I recover them. I recover them. I recover them in their tens and in their hundreds. I recover everything I lost. David said, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Will I recover them all? The Lord told him, pursue, overtake and recover them all. So Father, I recover all I lost in 2022. Every good thing I lost in 2022. I recover them. I recover them. I recover them. I recover them. I, I am restored. I am restored in tens and in hundreds of fold. I am restored. I receive divine restoration. 
all I lost in 2022, I received divine restoration in tens and in hundreds in the name of Jesus. Can you pray and say, Father, every evil you took away from me in 2022, they will not be surfaced this year. Every sickness that was taken away from me by you, every healing I receive by your help from every sickness, it will not resurface this year. It will not resurface this year. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray for our nation, Nigeria, this year. In February, we will have an election. Let us decree into this election that the Lord will have his way. It will be a divine selection for us. Hey, this year, under God, Nigeria will spring up again. We receive restoration in this nation. We will not suffer any kind of loss in this nation. Every news of war, war in the election will come against it. Every evil pronouncement, evil prophecy, evil declaration concerning this year in, in, upon this nation, we come against it. We come against it. Nigeria, hear the word of the Lord. You will blow them again. You will flourish again. You will blow them again. You will flourish again. Leaders that will make you blow them again. That will lead you like Moses into the promised land. Like Aaron into the promised land. We will, the Lord will select them for us. Never again we will make that mistake. Leaders after God's heart, he will select for us this year. Let us pray for the church. That the Lord himself we baptize us afresh for service this year. Oh, today is the first day in January. We rededicate ourselves for service this year. Holy Father, anoint every one of us for area primate. Olushola supervising bishop. And all your servants upon this altar and in the diocese of Lagos. Anoint us afresh for your service. Clothe us with a garment of fresh anointing. We will not operate under the under closed heaven, under last year's grace, but we receive fresh grace for 2023. Fresh anointing for 2023. As a church, whatever we bind there, let the heavens recognize it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray for this following families. Uche Ono, Ude, Udosi, Umumadu, and Uje. That the Lord Himself will give them insights in their family, divine ideas for mega miracles every impossibilities in their family. The Lord himself will turn them and make them possible. We will all celebrate his goodness concerning these families. For this business, Okoji Associates, UHI Quota Limited, Ventures Nigeria Limited, Venus Estate, Bypass Seaside, Watch Me NG, White Data Analysis Limited, that Jehovah this new year, these businesses, we experience a turnaround. A turnaround on every side. This year will be greater for them. This year, we bring forth new testimonies in those businesses. New contracts. Divine help. For these people who are celebrating their birthdays today. That the Lord will give them special birthday gifts. They will be the first partakers of these mega miracles. That the Lord will cause his face to shine upon them. Thank you, Jesus. Would you like to bring your request before the Lord this morning? Scripture says, the husband man will first eat of the fruits. We have come before him this morning. Can you say, Father, I will be the first partaker of these mega miracles. 
talk to him. Talk to the Lord. Concerning that situation in your heart, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Bestow your blessings, we pray you, upon all of us and upon your church and ministers everywhere. May increase in multitude hear your word. Receive it and live by it this year. May the power of your word that have come forth from your prophets and have declared this year a year of mega miracles. May every one of us experience the power of this word. So that your work, O oh Lord Almighty, in this nation and in our generation may be made known. That the doubter may be convinced. The wandering established. The sinful converted. And the gainsayers over our lives, over our family, over our business, silent forever. And grant that at the last, according to your word of prophecy, the Lord may be king over all the earth. One Lord. And his name won forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As a family in Christ, let us say the grace together. Please stand. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please let us offer one another a sign of peace. the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob will continue to be our refuge in the name of Jesus.
glorious Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. And through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And through him you have brought us to our year of mega miracles, trusting and believing that you will deliver these mega miracles into our hands. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. We see it on him. Accept our praise, his heavenly Father, through your Son and Savior Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, this gift of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you things. He gave it to them, saying, Drink these, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in. Remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup is one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, my great high priest, this a sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. No, we are, we are one body because we must share. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. 
Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to heed the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may have a more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are saved. People of God, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
take in Christ alone, in Christ alone.
we take the ablution in, all things are possible in the year of a mega miracle. And as we take that in, we have the Sunday collection, a seed of faith, a tithe, and uh, if you want to also give a new year offering unto God, please give and the Lord bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Most High God, 
in the year of our mega miracles, full of possibilities, we have brought our offerings. And we have sown this seed of faith at the beginning of this year. And we ask God, we will reap beyond our imaginations in the name of Jesus. As we begin this year, I pray for you, nothing negative will drain you financially. I declare again that financially and in all ramifications, you will never bow your head in shame. I ask that as you wait upon the Lord for his blessings, beyond your imaginations, he will pour them upon you. And none of us shall be found wanting of his grace. Bless this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God showed his love among us. He sent his one and the Holy Son into the world that we might live through him. The Lord be with you. Please sit or kneel. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. In the name of God, we would like to welcome all of us again into God's presence. This very first day of the year, the first Sunday of the year, uh, the first Sunday of the month. And we want to thank God for sparing our lives again and again. We cannot thank God enough. Uh, we can't thank God enough. And uh, Yoruba has a way of saying that if you know how to think, if you know how to think, uh, then you will know how to give thanks. And I know that we are people with thinking faculties, and we know and appreciate everything that the Lord has done in our lives. May his name continually be praised in the name of Jesus. Uh, we welcome all of us and those who are worshiping the first time. Interestingly, all of us are first time as this year. All of us are first time. So please, let's celebrate ourselves. Let's celebrate ourselves. All of us, first time as this year. Yeah. So if you now have those who are worshipping with us for the first time in history, in history of the church, in history of your coming to Lagos, I'm sure we would like to welcome you and to appreciate and celebrate you. Anywhere you are, you may want to wave your hands so that we can identify with you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please, those around them, please welcome them. Those around them, please welcome them. Please, those around them, welcome them, please. Please welcome them. If they are not, if you are not, if you are around them and you are not welcoming them, they, you know, yeah, that means, is it that you don't love them? Please welcome them, those around them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you and all yours in the name of Jesus. Yes, we appreciate you and please, we look forward to seeing you after the service. Uh, kindly wait at the back pew there. Some of our brethren will come to attend to you. Let me welcome specially our Papa Okeremi. We want to thank God for you, sir. Retired Bishop of his Papa, God bless you. We appreciate you. And we have our mind in our prayers, and we know that God Almighty uh, is going to be our strength all the days in the name of Jesus. And please, it's important to also um, remind all of us of the foundation from tomorrow, by God's grace. Um, it's a time to fast, it's a time to pray at the beginning of the year, to commit ourselves to the Lord. And uh, we have also mentioned that starting from uh, this year, we have services in the church 7 a.m. every day every day 7 a.m. service in the church and uh, please uh, anytime 
feel free to come into the church. And by virtue of uh, the program tomorrow, uh, we're going to be here in the evening, um, one hour of prayers to be here at 6 p.m. in the evening every day. You know, our curates are now you know, very much around. Um, so they are even saying that God, give us work to do. God, help us, strengthen us to be able to work for you. So I'm sure you can come around anytime. In fact, I can tell you that you, somebody will be available to pray for you, to pray for you. We want to thank God for this great thing. And we know he's saving us a lot of things. And we trust the Lord that more and more he will do in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let me say thank you to every one of us again uh, for being blessings unto all of us, uh, the clergy. In the season of, uh, you know, the season of Christmas and this new year, we pray that God's blessings will never, never cease in your life in the name of Jesus. We appreciate you. We are grateful. We are not taking any of these for granted. And we continue to trust the Lord to be there for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Our 20th anniversary, we have these details in the bulletin. Please go through them. Um, we have page bulletin on page 10. We have these details. And uh, it has been put in the bulletin. Um, I, they call it annual leave, uh, but it's actually meant to be, uh, meant to have more than two weeks for annual leave. Uh, but by God's grace, we'll be away, and that will be from next Sunday, by the grace of God, um, on vacation, on vacation by God's grace. And, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be abroad, myself and my heart, and we trust God uh, that His grace will continue to keep all of us. Those of you, who, I mean, those of our fathers and mothers who have been forcing me to go on this vacation, I thank you. I won't mention your names. I thank you. They've been on my neck to go for some time. I want to appreciate God for every one of us. I'm sure it's actually something that we need. And we know that God's grace and mercy will get all of us renewed to His own glory in the name of Jesus. Um, we also have to appreciate all of us again for the things that we have been able to do uh, last year, especially in the aspect of charity, especially in the aspect of charity. We want to appreciate you. We want to thank God for you. However, um, let me say this. Uh, this is a new year. Um, let me ask us, if you are passing through maybe um, any of our roads and you see your vicar, uh, and you see your vicar trying to enter a commercial vehicle, maybe to Ibadan or to, or to Abekuta, and you are in your ride and you are riding. How will you feel? How will you feel? Will you, will you be proud to say, ah, vicar, vicar, church? How will you feel? Will you be proud to say that? Ah, you are not shaking your head. So maybe, maybe you'll be proud. Will you be proud to say that, vicar, that's my vicar, that's my No. All right. Um, I want to appeal to us. I actually need something from us. Um, one of our bishops in the north called, and I know he's sincere. He has been jumping from one commercial vehicle to another. And you know in the north, um, they, you know what they face there. These are things that we could do. He's been, he's been you know, he, he's not somebody that is giving to much talking, telling people around. But because of our closeness, it was able to open up eventually to me. That was last year. And this has been on my mind. So I am appealing to you, people of God, as much as you would not be comfortable for your vicar to do that, how much more a bishop in the Anglican communion. All of us deserve, we have right um, to hold these thing, beautiful things of life. So I want to make this appeal. If God is laying it on your heart, to give towards this. And probably it's not asking for a brand new um, Mercedes Benz or a brand new, uh, or a brand new, what is the latest? Rolls Royce. No, 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 no. It's, um, I mean, something, even if it's uh, Tokumbo, even if it's a uh, second hand, uh, no problem. I won't tell him it's second hand. I will just deliver it to him on your behalf. And I'm sure he will appreciate it. So, all I'm asking for to the glory of God is that please, we can extend ends of fellowship. If God has given you, and you have some in your garage, they're just there, and uh, you are not using them in the past maybe four, five years, or two years, and God is saying that you can give that, please let us do. I pray that God Almighty will bless each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, and uh, we want to also thank God for the life of uh, our dear father and brother, Mr. Okumbo Sage, who will be 60 in February. He has asked us to tell the church we will be celebrating this. And our mom is here. 
He'll be celebrating 60 in February. So we thank God for him. And by the grace of God, he's the chairman of the uh, 20th anniversary committee. So I've just mentioned to him yesterday that probably that is part of the 20th anniversary celebration. Maybe that is part of the 20th anniversary celebration. That is February 8th, I think, uh, by the grace of God. We'll be here, it's a Wednesday, and we'll be here in the church to celebrate his life as he to celebrate God's grace upon him. And I know that it will be a beautiful time in God's presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much. We want to have Thanksgiving for New Year. All right. So we want to have Thanksgiving for New Year. Thank you very much.
please let us turn to somebody as we take our prophetic declaration. Uh, we'll take our prophetic declaration together. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Declare to the life of that person throughout this year and beyond, the Lord will go ahead of you. He will empower you for greatness. He will empower you for greater miracles. No good thing shall be impossible for you. People will hear of your testimonies and glorify God. You will never be put to shame. Every ocean of impossibilities ahead of you this year, the Lord will take them away. Walls of impossibility will fall down before you. Everything in your life we cooperate with mega miracles in the name of Jesus. I'm sure you want to declare it into your own life. This year and beyond, the Lord will go ahead of me. He will empower me for greatness. He will empower me for mega miracles. No good thing shall be impossible for me to do. People will hear of my testimonies and glorify the Lord. Every ocean of impossibilities will give way for me. I will not bow my head in shame. Walls of impossibilities will fall before me. Everything in my life will cooperate with mega miracles. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as you have spoken in my ear, so shall I do. I activate the power of that word you have declared into your life. By the power of the word, the Lord created the heavens and the earth. Until today, we celebrate the heads and the heavens and everything therein. You have sent the word of God ahead into the year 2023. Nothing shall be impossible for you to achieve. I declare again, nothing good shall be impossible for you to achieve. As you go this year, mega miracles is your portion in the name of Jesus. You have started this year dancing and rejoicing. You will not end this year in shame in the name of Jesus. You will not end this year in tragedy in the name of Jesus. The Lord will manage your life for you. The Lord will manage your business for you. The Lord will manage your children for you. Blessings and miracles that we make people to come and celebrate with you and rejoice with you before the end of January. They will begin to surface in your life. I declare they will begin to surface in the life of your children. Every week in the year 2023 will be significantly glorious for you in the name of Jesus. The battles you fought in the year 2022 will be under your feet this year in the name of Jesus. The battles you did not fight in the year 2022 will be under your feet this year in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless your going out. The Lord will bless your coming in. As we have given unto the Lord at the beginning of this year, I pray again, nothing negative we drain you financially in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ever living God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please sit on him. We have anointing oil placed at the entrance of the church. Please, if you want to make use of this oil, 
do it in faith and God will continue to be glorified in our lives. You may want to commit yourself again unto God. It's a new year with a new chapter. It's a new year with a new glory. It's a new year with a new power, with new strength, with new grace. And maybe you want to make a vow to God as you go in this year. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. service next Sundays will be 7.30 and 8 a and 10 a.m. as usual. Next Sunday by the grace of God, 7.30 and 10 a.m. as usual. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.